Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, back again with another video for you. Um, today I wanted to do another tutorial. Um, something that I've been hearing a lot of questions about um, around the community and just something people don't know a whole... There's a, a group of people um, that don't know a whole lot about this. So I want to go ahead and uh, actually show you today how to build a microcoil and uh, stuff some cotton in it for a, a pretty amazing vape actually. Uh, right here, I've actually got uh, a dual coil uh, on an IGO W, and it's at about 0 0.6, 0 0.6 ohms right now. Um, so just a fantastic vape. Uh, battery's getting a little low here. But awesome vapor production nonetheless. Go ahead and let's see. So, um, microcoils have kind of been my thing lately. Uh, I've really been enjoying them, and especially enjoying them with cotton. Uh, cotton will take any flavor that you regularly vape and make it a completely different flavor um, from what you would normally taste in silica, uh, stainless steel mesh, or, or any other wicking material. It's just like any other uh, wicking material, you know change that material and it's uh, going to drastically change the flavor. Um, so I'm going to go ahead um, and just kind of get started here. Um, teach you how to build this on a IGO L uh, today. I'll be using 28 gauge canthal um, drill bit. The size of the drill bit is um, completely up to you. You know I've seen people use a variety of sizes so um, just kind of get a feel for how big you want your coils to be and you know obviously not super small but not super huge um, so I, I've heard of some people doing them around like an 18 gauge needle uh, the problem that I found with that is you can't get a whole lot of cotton in um, a coil that small or at least that was my experience I was not able to get it to work really well um, so a couple other things you'll need, obviously some uh, wire cutters here, uh, needle nose pliers, uh, you will need a torch, uh, a, uh, what else, um, obviously a mod, um, you know, to kind of uh, do this. Uh, so let's go ahead, I think that's pretty much all we're going to need. Um, you know, screwdriver to, to take the screws off your off your Addy. Um, so I guess we'll just go ahead and get right to this. Um, go ahead, uh, like I said, I am using 28 gauge Canthal here. You can use whatever you want, but I found that this 28 gauge actually works really well for these micro coils. Let's go ahead and we're going to snip off a bit here. And make sure you guys can kind of see everything here that I'm doing. Um, this, I watch people do tutorials before, and everyone always says that it is hard to do a tutorial like this on camera. I 100% agree. Um, so kudos to anyone who does a tutorial on camera. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so you'll need a torch. Uh, what I'm going to do here is first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just torch the canthal. Uh, what that's basically going to do for anyone who's new to rebuildables and using canthal. Um, is just make your camp all that much more malleable and easier to work with. All 
right. So basically, you'll just get kind of each section red hot. Um, you know, you don't have to go at it forever. So back down to the camera here. Now, I don't have video editing skills, so all my videos, until I learn how to do otherwise, are completely continuous shots. So if I mess up at all as I'm doing this, I apologize. I'm not able to reshoot this video without starting the whole damn thing over. All right. So what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and leave a little bit of a lead here on the end. Um, couple inches, inch and a half, two inches. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the solid part of your drill bit. Obviously you're not going to want to do it along uh, the ridges here. So the solid part of your drill bit and you're just going to start wrapping it. Uh, make your wraps very tight. The tighter your wraps are, the better this coil is going to perform. Now the first one's always kind of the hardest. It always leaves this little gap here. That's not a huge deal. We will go ahead and fix that um, when we put the coil on. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do about seven wraps here. And just like so. So you want to end it with one lead, obviously, on the bottom, one lead on the top. I'm going to go ahead and clip these so they are even. And basically, you're going to end up with something like this. Like I said, it, it makes it easier if, yours are, if your coils are completely... Um, push together, uh, but if there is a little bit of a gap, that's not going to be a huge issue because when we when we heat it up and, and push the coils together, it's, it's going to fix that problem anyway. Um, so now that we've got our coil here, um, the next part I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and loosen these screws up here. And you're just going to go ahead and, this is super simple, um, mount one of your leads, attach one of your leads to, I hope you guys can see this okay, um, attach one of your leads to your positive post and your negative post. Um, I always start, this is just the way I've always done it, it's what works best for me, I always start on the negative post. I go on the inside of the negative post to the outside and kind of bring that back around, tighten that down, and then my um, my positive post, I basically just go around the outside on that and bring it around to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that down as well. And what you want to make sure of here, um, you want this, you want your coil as close to your air hole as possible. But obviously, you want to make sure your coil is not going to be touching your cap. So you still want a little bit of a gap there between that and your cap. Um, the coil in your cap, and uh, but again, you want it to as close to your air hole as possible. Uh, it's going to perform best that way. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do next, um, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure these leads are secure. And I'm going to go ahead and test the resistance really quick before I do anything. Let's see what we got. 
All right, so 1.4. I was intending to run this on my Proveri, um, so that's right where I want to be. All right, this next part um, is where we're going to go ahead and if you see the coils here, um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see that down there, but if you see my coils, there's a little bit, there's some gaps between them. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and push those together. What we're going to do is check it and see how it's heating up here. Um, and it looks to be heating up just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up, let it go, and as it starts to cool down, I'm going to push these coils together. I kind of blow on it to cool it down a little faster. And you're going to do this several times until your coils are basically touching, all of them are touching and, and kind of fused together, so to speak. So you can see what I'm doing there, Just heating up that coil, letting it go, and then pushing it together with the needle nose pliers. Now, one thing I've learned is your coil definitely doesn't have to be perfect. Um, one little trick is as you pinch them together, what kind of happens is your coils get kind of out of whack. Um, you know, they, they, get, they get fused together, so to speak, but uh, they also get kind of all bent um, from being pushed. So I found a little trick that you use your same drill bit that you use to wrap um, to wrap your coils and basically you just kind of use that to straighten them back out. Um, so we got a little bit straighter there. So you can do the exact same thing. You can heat it up and then go ahead and put that screwdriver through and kind of pull your coils tight so you get more of a, uh, a you know, consistent wrap there and then what you can do that will mess up the spacing a little bit uh, as you put that drill bit through but you just go right back to it and uh, you know clamp these back together so we're just gonna do that a couple more times here All right, so that's kind of what the look that we want to get here. Want to make sure everything is glowing nice and evenly, which they are. You also want to make sure that your leads here, you want to make sure that the legs are not hot spotting or anything like that. Uh, so we'll just double check here one more time. No hot spots on the leads. They're not heating up. So that's what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I've got everything the way I want it, I'm just going to go ahead and clip these off. And what I'll usually do after I clip those, they're, it may be really hard to see on camera, but they tend to be, you can see little um, left over there, um, just basically take a pair of pliers or, or you know whatever you want and push those down the last thing that you want happening is for those little pieces of uh, canthal there to touch your cap or touch each other or anything like that um, so that's building a micro coil um, super simple uh, even simpler is putting in your cotton uh, I'm using organic cotton that I found at Rite Aid um, and it's whitened with hydrogen peroxide. A lot of people are telling me, and, and this makes sense, but a lot of people are telling me that you don't need to boil it if it's organic, you know, just because it's whitened with hydrogen peroxide. Um, apparently as soon as the peroxide dries, you're, you're fine. You don't have to worry about it. But 
for my own peace of mind, I did boil it uh, for about 15 minutes. And just throw a bunch of cotton balls in a, in a pot and boil it for about 15 minutes. Uh, when you pull them out, wring them out the best you can. There's obviously going to be some water left over. So um, what you'll do is after that, basically uh, just take a paper towel and, and kind of squish it all together and, um, you know, soak up that, that excess moisture. Um, and then I kind of pull them apart a little bit and kind of fluff them back out, let them dry for a little bit and you're good to go. So that's what I have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull off a bit of cotton here. And what I'm finding with cotton, um, basically when I, when I first started out building, um, micro coils with cotton wicks is I would basically kind of take the cotton and build just a giant bed of it and wrap it all the way around back here. Uh, what was happening with that is that cotton was getting super soaked, but I was getting dry hits pretty fast. Um, so what, I, what I've kind of found out and confirmed with a few different cotton and microcoil experts that uh, less tends to be more. Um, so I just pulled off a little piece here and I'm just going to kind of start rolling this. Um, you want to make sure it's not too tight. Um, you want basically to be able to get it through your coil here. And then I just kind of pull it um, to the end here that where I, I make this a little bit skinnier so I can get it pulled through, but I leave the end a little bit fluffy um, so it fits nice and snug right in there on inside of that coil. Uh, so once you do that, you're just gonna go ahead and clip that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and clip a bit off on this end here. And that is what I'm left with here. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, just go ahead and get this cotton wet with some juice. By the way, I found more my, my organic co uh, cotton at Rite Aid. Um, places like, uh, I couldn't find it like I tried... A few different local grocery stores. I tried uh, Walmart, Kmart. None of them had organic cotton. They just had like the, you know, beautician cotton. So uh, I did have to go to um, Rite Aid to pick that up. But uh, I also know that uh, CVS cotton works very, very well. Um, so, you know, your choice there. But just giving you an idea of where I found that. So now that I've got that soaked, you want to make sure it gets soaked pretty good. The last thing that you want is for your cotton to dry up. If your cotton dry burns, uh, it ruins the cotton and could light on fire, which is not good. Uh, so I'll go ahead and we'll just test this out here. So kind of vapor production we're getting. I'm looking pretty, pretty good there, actually. Put a little more juice on here. We're getting a, actually an awesome vapor production here. Um, again, I said this was uh, 1.5 ohms. Right now, I've got my voltage at 3.8 is all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this up a little bit. I like running this around about 4.2. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run there. All right. Now that we got that built, let's just go ahead and see how it vapes. Um, again, cotton, ever since I first used it with micro coils, has just been my absolute favorite. Uh, just mounds of vapor. The flavor is absolutely just super clean. I, I'm in love with it.
So, um, that is the tutorial I have for you today on how to build a microcoil with a cotton wick. Um, if you guys have any questions, I hope you will leave uh, the questions in the comment. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have as you kind of get into, um, you know, building microcoils and using cotton and things like that. Uh, so give me a shout if you have any questions. Um, you can find me on Facebook under Lord Vapor. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram under Lord Vapor as well, um, V-A-P-E-R. Um, so that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for your time. Hope this video didn't roll, uh, run too long here, and uh, we will catch you next time.